Shabbat Shalom, beloved. Or were. I realize that the Shabbat is coming to an end. The Lord put something on me and I had to take a moment to put it together. We are one spirit, one people, and one faith. We are under the spirit of the Most High Yahuwah. I am sharing this with you as I am moved. We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed and therefore I have spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. The spirit of faith, beloved, that one spirit, we are likened unto before the people in the days of Nimrod had their language confused. There is a language in the spirit. It is the spirit of faith. We are one faith, one spirit, and one Lord. And that spirit binds us together. It gives us power. This spirit, which is also of the spirit of truth under Yahuwah HaMashiach, Yeshua HaMashiach, the living word of the everlasting Father, binds us and empowers us with a spiritual power, a power that is moving throughout the world because we are one people, one spirit under the Most High. I want to show you what this spirit of faith is doing. But before I do, we must give praise, honor, and glory unto Yahuwah Elohim, Yahuwah of our ancestors, Yahuwah of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yasharel. Thou who art from everlasting to everlasting, thou who speaks thy word of life, it took on flesh, walked among us as a man to save thy beloved. Thou whose Holy Spirit is upon us and anoints us in the spirit of truth with power, Father, we ask that you come in and bind us. Make us like in the days of Nimrod, but instead of us being a rebellious people, we are under you, Father. You, Yahuwah, our Elohim, our Adonai. We have one spirit, the spirit of faith in you. For without faith, we cannot please you. We are bound together. And as you said, there is nothing that can be withheld from us. Like you said in the days of Nimrod, when the people were of one language, we too are of one language, one language of the spirit of faith in you. It does not matter what continent we are on. We are all one because we are under you, Father, and we are one body, the temple where thy glorious Holy Spirit dwells. We ask that you purge us and forgive us our sins and the sins of our ancestors. Look upon us with eyes of mercy. Bind us together and throw off our enemies. Bring us back to you, Father, that we may do those things that you would have us do, following thy law, statutes, and commands with delight in our hearts, minds, and spirits. Father, we want to glorify you today. You are above and beyond anything our minds can conceive. Everlasting, Father. Your word surrounds us, bathes us, cleanses us in your truth. Your Holy Spirit speaks to us and guides us as we go throughout our lives. Let our eyes be open that we may discern good and evil in both one another that we may warn each other, that we may see the evil in the world and turn from it, the evil inside of us that your spirit helps us overcome it. And let the spirit of faith take hold, Father, for the sin that besets us, free us, Father. We glorify you today. We glorify you, and if we spoke with a thousand tongues, we could not give you the honor you deserve, although we try, Father. Glory, hallelujah, praise you, Father. Thank you, for you are lifting up the head of your people. 
and casting down the heathen, the abomination that dishonored you and the world. We thank you, Father, and we come in one mind, one faith, one spirit under you, believing, receiving, asking, and praising you for crushing this heathenist nation, for crushing this heathenistic world, our enemies and your enemies. We thank you, Father, because we see your truth is moving throughout the land. In the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, thy living word of life, we give you praise, honor, and glory. Amen. Yes, beloved, we, having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe, therefore I have spoken. We believe, therefore speak. Yes, beloved. These words we speak one to another, they are going out throughout the world. Even the heathen is trying to reference the scriptures because they see the end has come for this sinful, corrupt life. When we look, I'm going to reference things because I can't pull everything up. When we look in the book of Jasher, we see that right before the days of Noah, when man was sinning, the earth became corrupt. They had corrupted it. The things they were doing corrupted it. The world, did, the earth did not yield its increase and still they continued to sin. There were floods before the major flood and they still continued to sin. There were warnings, but they ignored them. As the living word says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the last days. And it is the same. They began to mix animals and species and things that were never supposed to be mixed. And it grieved Yahuwah that he had made man. The earth had become corrupt. She did not yield her produce anymore. She needed to be cleansed. Yes, beloved, there was a flood in those days, but there's a fire coming to cleanse the land this time. But before the Most High took Noah and put him on that ark, he put the beloved fathers and people that were his own to sleep. Yes, he put them to sleep <clears throat> because he had chosen Noah and his family to repopulate the earth. Right now, we are watching the changes go about, but many of us may not know that all those under Yahuwah, the truth is moving throughout the earth, even to the point of people throwing off the false Christianity that they've been taught, that one with Seja Borgia. How is it that a people who hate Yasharel and people who look like Yasharel. What do they do when they recognize the truth, be it in the book of Daniel or in the book of Revelation? That you're sure. The one that's set on that throne, whether we're talking about the description of Yeshua in the book of Revelation or the Ancient of Day that he looked like those they claim to hate. The lawless ones. But our words are going out throughout the whole world and the world is reacting, beloved. The world is reacting. We confess our faults one to another. I am a sinner and I ask our father through his word to forgive me my sins. And give me the strength and the will to never repeat them. Help me. And I pray that the Father helps you too. Yes, beloved, I too sin. I'm confessing it. And praying for one another that we may be healed. Healing, not just the healing of our bodies. The healing of our spirits after having been polluted in this corrupt heathenistic system of lies and raping. The healing of our minds from being taught things that have no truth in them. Healed, beloved. The healing of our land 
the healing of our nation, the healing of the earth, the healing from the heathenistic pagans that have ruled but are falling away. Yes, beloved, that we may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man, it availeth much. What does that mean? The righteous availeth, it has power when we pray. And what I want to do is begin to show you the power of your prayers so you can be encouraged because we are moving by a spirit of faith. We are one people. Yes, it does not matter what continent you are on. It does not matter, beloved. That spirit of faith. I want to talk about faith because without faith, it is impossible to please Yahuwah. Yes, yes, yes. For he that cometh to Yah must believe that he is. Mm -hmm. And that he is a rewarder. You see, there are rewards when we come to Yahuwah in faith. Yes, come on now. Wait a minute. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently, we are diligently seeking him. We do not want the pollution of these lying, profane pagans anymore. There's no truth in it. They have corrupted the earth. Mm, mm, mm. We are diligently seeking him because we know he is. Yes, yes, yes. We are following the example of our ancestor, Abraham. Yes, it was by faith. Yes, yes. That Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should have to receive for the inheritance, he obeyed and went out, not knowing where he went. He obeyed. Yes, yes, yes. Wait a minute. Now, Noah, whoo, he was warned of God. Yahuwah warned him of things not seen. But moved with fear, he prepared an ark to the saving of his house. Yes, yes, yes. Come on now. It was by faith that Enoch was translated that he should not see death. This faith, we are under the spirit of faith. There is power. He is a rewarder. Yes, beloved. Yes, of them that diligently seek him through faith. That spirit of faith. Yes, beloved. Yes. Mm-hmm. And see, it is through faith that we are praying these effectual, fervent prayers that are availing much. They have power. They're going throughout the world. I want to show you, beloved. Yes, yes, yes. You see, even that whore Babylon, those, those beasts are beginning to turn on her. It's, it's a, what do you call it, upset in the house of, Babylon. Allow me to play this video for you, beloved, before I continue. I don't think you'd have to be a genius to know that the last thing the Horn of Africa needs is more foreign military bases, more weapons, and more European meddling. Hello, fam. Welcome back to my channel. I am Ungil Zalalem, and today I bring to you another speech <laughs> yet another speech from europe this time it's a member of parliament of the european union she's an irish politician her name is claire Daly, and she had some interesting things to say watch this clip we'll come back and discuss i don't think you'd have to be a genius to know that the last thing the horn of africa needs is more foreign military bases more weapons and more european meddling what we call our strategic relationship isn't about human flourishing. It's about the EU's ambitions as a superpower. There's now a new great game in the Horn of Africa. Greater and lesser powers are pockmarking the place with military bases. France, the US, China, Germany, Japan, Italy, Saudi Arabia all have a presence in the tiny area of Djibouti alone. Mercenaries are swarming in from all quarters. The entire region is being militarized. War is in the air. And what about the people facing climate and food insecurity? None of this benefits them. We talk about instability, but we only make it worse. We flood the place with weapons, hand over the profits to European arms companies and charge the bill to our citizens. And then with the carnage, we go back in and we do it all again. 
it's a racket. Strategic relationship, it's one thing after another, isn't it? Really, it's the same as it ever was. And all I can say is God save Africa from Europeans offering help. We have been talking about this for a long time. No one cares to listen, especially those who claim to help us, who claim to care about us. And that's the reason why they give us all this loan and send us all this food, you know, that with the NGOs and want to fix our problems with this humanitarian um, organizations. We've been talking about this for a while now. And unfortunately they don't they don't hear us out maybe now that their own people are starting to speak up maybe they listen i'm not sure i wouldn't put my money on it but it's interesting to see how europeans themselves are fighting amongst each other when it comes to africa it's like they're not agreeing they're not speaking the same language that's what it seems like to me, at least, with the Prime Minister of Italy saying what she said about Macron and France. I talked about this um, a week ago, I believe. And then now this, and also they're disagreeing when it comes to buying oil and gas from Russia. So many disagreements are arising. And at the end of the day, you know, when you are doing something wrong, I always say this, what goes around comes back around. And there's always consequence to everything that we put out there, right? All right, beloved, what goes around comes around. We are hearing scripture spoken in a different way. You reap what you sow. Yes, beloved, we are also watching as we pray for our deliverance and the truth that Yahuwah set us free from these colonizers, from these heathens, from these pagan nations that are like vampires trying to suck the life, not only out of us, but out of the earth. Yahuwah hears us. We are rising up and we are one and our prayers of faith are availing much. Listen, beloved, another. I'm gonna need you to watch this. We'll come back and discuss. Human suffering across the world is at unprecedented levels and the number of people in need of humanitarian assistance at an all time high. Even before the war in Ukraine, 82 million people were facing food insecurity and 86 million people were displaced. And undoubtedly, those figures are far higher now. But here in Europe, we've built a fortress to keep them out and the walls are just getting higher. Visas for Afghans have dried up. And as the UN humanitarian coordinator for Somalia put it, funds for emergencies are drying up too because Ukraine seems to suck all the oxygen that is in the room. In Brussels, Afghan men are put on the streets and the Red Cross closes its operation to everybody except Ukrainians. I am glad and proud of our prompt and broad welcome for all Ukrainian refugees. But Afghans didn't start the war and Somali children aren't trying to keep it going. So why should they suffer from our two-tier racist migration policy? It's not good enough. We need to work on this and work to end the war. Yes, Clear Daily is yes. like a gift that you see, beloved, the word of the Lord is pure, like silver refined in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Everything Yahuwah said in his written truth is coming to pass. They're turning on one another. And at the same time, those who have been trapped under their system are rising up, they know that they have the support of their brothers and sisters. These prayers are availing much. And as the heathen grows weaker, the truth of Yahuwah's word, the faith of his people is moving. Even the earth has turned. The earth is in rebellion. The earth itself will not tolerate anymore, just like it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the last days. But we, beloved, we are Genesis 11 in reverse. What do I mean? 
just like there was an evil when the people were under Nimrod because Nimrod turned, we are under Yahuwah, one mind, one language. It's the language of the spirit of faith. That's our language. We have power. We cannot be stopped because once we all agree, go to when we say one thing we will do in unison, it will move everything out of our way. And we are under one language, the language of faith, one mind, the mind of the most high, one Lord, and what he tells us. Yes, beloved, yes. Yes, yes, yes. In this tower, this tower, unlike the one in of Babel, this tower that we are in is a temple. We are one body. That's the tower we're dwelling in, beloved. Yes, yes, yes. And when Yahuwah looks down and comes down, he is dwelling in this tower because we don't have a king named Nimrod. We have the everlasting to everlasting as the one over us that we are following, beloved. Yes, yes, yes. And the power is unstoppable. It's going global, beloved. And those of you, I don't care if you're in Haiti or in Europe or in Africa or in Australia, North America, South America, the islands, Italy, Germany, Spain, China, Russia, wherever the beloved are, wherever the apple of Yahuwah's dwell, the apple of Yahuwah's eye dwells, that spirit of faith with that effectual and fervent prayer of the beloved is availing much. Yes, beloved. Jesus Christ is a stranger in Africa. You will definitely pack your load and go. Oh, I they are talking about the falsehoods taught to them. Just like it happened to us here, it happened to them over there where they bought the Bible, but they bought it in a lying manner. They bought the word not to lift the people up, not to create the spirit of faith with one body, one tower, no, but to rob, kill, steal, and destroy. But the awakening has come, and it is worldwide, beloved. And the U.E. shall never go back to sleep. This is what they're saying. She's talking about, and I want to back it up a little bit. Forgive me, bear with me. Let's see if I can get it back just a little bit more where she's talking and I'll slow it down. You Europeans lie to us and put our minds to sleep. Come on now. Woo, didn't he say a sleep, a slumber has come over us for a long time. This is what she talked about. <laughs> then showed us Mary, son of Jesus Christ, and said he is the God of the world. They're talking about Christianity now. Yes, beloved. And we are telling our people, a black man, you cannot serve a God that was given to you by your slave master. How Ooh. is this possible? Come on. Think, Africa. Think. So we are seeing a shift here on the continent. The tides are changing, although slowly, but certainly. Africans are denouncing foreign religions. So Islam, Christianity, they are backing out and want absolutely nothing to do with it ever again. And I One of the things, beloved, even when they talk about the slave trade, you see a lot of people, particularly here in the Western Hemisphere, we here in the United States, we know about the transatlantic slave trade. Come on. But you see... There was an Arab, an Arabic slave trade. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. On the east coast of Africa. Yes, yes, yes. The Arabs and the Asians were coming in. 
and enslaving them and forcing Islam on them. That's what they're talking about. But they are awakening to themselves. Remember, we were scattered to the four corners of the earth. Over here, they don't even want us to talk about the enslavement that happened over here. So it's not hard to understand or recognize that they ignore the degradation and the enslavement that came out of the East Coast of Africa and what the Arabs did and what the Asians did when they enslaved us. Yes, yes, they were going over there. They called it trade, okay? But one of the number one things they were doing out of the East Coast of Africa, they wanted slaves, okay? They wanted to enslave the people. Yes, they were also after the resources. They also forced their religions on them. But remember the spirit of faith, which is under the spirit of truth, because we are under the most high, okay? It's upon us, beloved. I'm going to let it go. Awakening is going on, guys. Africans have been asleep for a very long time, but they are finally waking up. And we're talking about all across the continent. It's happening. I have two clips right here I'm going to put up for you guys to see from Nigeria here and from Congo, these clips are from. And this is happening because Africans are slowly, finally starting to realize that these religions are nothing but a tool that was used to colonize, enslave, and subdue them. <laughs> talking about the degradation, the evil, the inhumane treatment, the dehumanizing and inhumane treatment that they had and they are throwing off. It is going on worldwide. I'm not going to play this entire video. I just want you to see, beloved, some of it, okay? And now I'm going to go to the next one. We are talking about Haiti, Haiti, as well as Africa, as well as Africa. Right now, Haiti has this uh, put in President Ariel, but he's a puppet president because if you remember correctly, the other one was assassinated. And, you know, I liken these things to when I read the book of Maccabees, Maccabees 1, there was a so-called Yazraelite who turned towards the heathen. He turned on his own people. He came in wanting power and control because he was going to help the heathens rob his own people for his own selfish benefit. Until Yahuda Maccabee rose up, we have within those two thirds, those traitors, if you will, and Haiti knows that this false president, they want him down. The West put in this puppet president. And right now there are uprisings that have been going on and on and on. And they're not just going on in Haiti. They're going on in Africa. They want France and all those other colonial powers out. They are still attempting to practice neo-colonialism, colonialism, but they also recognize that we are all under the spirit of faith. We are all praying. We are trusting and we have faith in Yahuwah, our Elohim, the true and everlasting from everlasting Elohim, our Adonai, that these heathens, these pagans, their time is up and their judgment has come. And the spirit of truth is empowering us all over the world. 
May Yah have mercy and empower Haiti, raise them up so that they can also have peace and live like human beings should live. Just like, like I said, it brought to mind First Maccabees when the rebel Yasharalite helped the heathens for his own gain and not caring about honoring the law, statutes, and commands of the Most High, not honoring what the Most High taught us, turning on his own people for his own gain. That is what this Prime Minister Ariel Henry is doing. He's bringing in foreign troops. He's asking for foreign troops. The people did not want him. They had another one. But he was somehow assassinated, the good Prime Minister. But Yajarel is rising up all over the world for love. And it is that spirit of faith and our fervent and effectual prayers that are availing all over the world, beloved. And we pray for Haiti. I find it very interesting. Billions and billions and billions of our tax dollars are going to Ukraine. But when the Haitians came seeking uh, uh, protection, seeking solace, seeking help, they turned them away. They were whipping them, had the people running through water, left them under a bridge put them on buses and send them back home, put them on planes. Now they want to come over there with foreign troops and tell these people what to do and help run their country. No, beloved. Remember, the spirit of faith, we are one all over the world. <laughs> Avec la France Canada, reviens à nous, reviens à nous en paix la vie. Reviens à nous, 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 revi
a lot has been going on here on the continent and of course in Haiti. And we see and hear everything that's going on. Protests spanning for days now, our people here on the continent in Burkina Faso, as well as our people in Haiti have been protesting, asking for the exact same thing. They want foreign interference to stop in their countries. And of course, mainstream media is doing what mainstream media does best. You know you cannot trust them to give you relevant information. I saw one coverage from Vice. They were talking about what was happening in Burkina Faso, but they did not even mention France. They did not mention in their coverage that the reason why the people of Burkina Faso were protesting was because they do not want France in their business anymore. They made no mention whatsoever of the sentiment of the Burkina Faso people and what they wanted. They said nothing about the atrocities that France is committing and how they fund these terrorist groups that caused the problem in the country, held the problem in the entire continent. So yeah, mainstream media can't trust them to give you relevant information, can't trust them to give you the truth of the situation that's going on. Same thing with how they are covering what's going on in Haiti. This is why I'm so pleased that we now have social media and we can actually get authentic information as to exactly what is going on. Because relying on these people, you get nothing. Surprising? No, of course not. Because all these media outlets work hand in hand with and are down with the agenda of these invaders. They are all one and the same, not the same rope tie them, constantly working together to achieve the exact same goal. Talking about how they want to send down to Haiti special troops or forces to go help, help in quotes, troops to help with the gangs and terrorist situation that's happening in Haiti. But the Haitian people are saying, no, keep your help, your special forces or troops to yourself. We don't want that. We would handle our problems ourselves. Let us handle our problems ourselves. You cannot keep forcing your help on us. And of course, yes, because these people come disguised as helpers, but they are actually the problem. They cause the instabilities, pay these terrorist groups, and they profit from the instabilities. It's the same thing that's happening in Africa. Madam Bokman from Twitter says, so a group of nations can sit in New York City and plan the evasion slash occupation of Haiti, despite the opposition of millions of Haitians, yet colonialism is supposed to be over. Exactly. The constant meddling is annoying. How can you be in your own country discussing and planning what is going to happen in ours? Berlin conference literally happening every single freaking day. The Haitian people are also saying that they are tired of the sitting puppet leader that they have. They do not want that. They want a leader that's for the people, that care about the livelihood and the well-being of the people, not a leader who's answering to the U.S. or to the U.N. And they are within their rights. The people are using the power of the people. In their majority, they are standing strong, demanding what they want. We are presently looking at a revolution going down. The people are tired in Haiti. The people are tired in Burkina Faso, and they are demanding for a change. It's good to see them boldly standing for themselves. I stand with Haiti. I stand with Burkina Faso. I stand with my people. This journey we are on with the location in mind called freedom, we are definitely going to get there. All hands on deck moving forward. We have to press on head on and grab what we want. Ibrahim Traore, the young army captain who led the last Burkina Faso coup, will be inaugurated as interim president on Friday. I would like to end this video on this tweet. Colonel Asimi Goita, referring to the present interim president of Mali. I am not a supporter of coups, but the courage with which this, not Burkina Faso, this is a mistake, Mali. Okay? I am not a supporter of coups, but the courage with which this Mali leader is quickly dismantling the French game plan designed to steal Africa's resources and keep them poor and beholden is worthy of acclaim and emulation by all of Africa. I don't know about anyone else, but like Malcolm X says, by any means necessary. Colonel Asimi Goita, the 36-year-old new Mali military leader, has cancelled eight out of 11 secret agreements with France. The automatic confiscation of national financial reserves cancelled. The right of preference over any raw or natural resources discovered in the country cancelled. Priority to French interests and companies in public contracts and public tenders cancelled. Exclusive right to provide military equipment and train military officers of the colonies. Cancelled. The right for France to send troops and intervene militarily in the country to defend its interests. Cancelled. The obligation to send to France an annual check up and a report on the status of the reserves. Cancelled. Renounce all military alliance with other countries. 
except France's permission, canceled. The obligation to ally with France in case of world war or crisis, canceled. And there, my friends, on this beautiful note, this video has come to an end. Yes, beloved. Yes, yes, yes. Understand, even to the point of telling them to align with them in case of a military war. What does that mean? What does that mean? We want you to lay your lives down for us. We want you to die for us. Kind of like what we saw when Ukraine had no regard for the brothers and sisters that were trying to leave Ukraine. Okay, no regard for them at all. But stay and help us fight. Stay and help us fight. But when they wanted to leave, even the women, they didn't care. Now, again, before I end, before I close, let me say, we having the same spirit of faith. We're in that tower. Unlike the Tower of Babylon, the Tower of Babel with Nimrod, this tower, this tower that we are in, is ordained and sanctioned by Yeshua HaMashiach. We are the body. We are that tower, okay? And we have the spirit of faith, one mind, one spirit, one Lord. According as it is written, I believe, therefore I have spoken. We believe and therefore speak, beloved. Yes, yes. This one, one mind. Just like in the days of Nimrod, but Nimrod chose to go evil. We are following the most high. His word, his spirit, his truth. Yes, we are. And nothing can be withheld from us. That's why it's moving all over the world, beloved. That 400-year marker is over. We are awakened. It is moving worldwide. We need to know we are one to encourage each other, to pray for one another. Yes, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that we may be healed. We need a healing. We need it spiritually. We need it mentally as well as physically because the pollution and the corruption and the lies with which we have been taught. Woo! But the spirit of the Lord, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, beloved. Yes, yes, yes. And the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. We praying for one another. And those prayers are going out. They're not coming back. Boy. Yes, yes, yes. And to finish. Whether I talk about the faith of Abel, the faith of Enoch, the faith of Noah, the faith of Abraham, even through faith, also Sarah herself received strength mm -hmm, to conceive, see, and be delivered of a child. She was an old woman, but it was faith that did it for Sarah. She believed. Some people that old be thinking, I'm going to die. It was through faith. These powerful things were done. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Mm, mm, mm. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down. Okay, the walls of Babylon. Don't you see the foundations cracking? The walls are crumbling. It's our faith, that spirit of faith and that fervent, effectual prayer because we are one spirit, one mind, one Lord. It creates one language. And once we come together, there's nothing can stop us. But this time, the most high is down and he's not against us like he was in the days of Nimrod. Right? He is for us. Nimrod was rebel. We are not rebel, beloved. And even though, just like it was in 1 Maccabees, you have your, your Israelites that are rebels. They're Nimrod. The Lord's dealing with them. We got Jacob, ja uh, Jehuda Maccabees in our camp, and they're not backing up. They're, they're powerful. They're anointed, beloved. I've been moved. I'm trying to say so much is kind of jarbling. I ask that the Lord bless us and keep us. Father, we are coming together once again at the end of this video. I'm asking that your spirit move throughout the world and encourage us, Father. Let us be one spirit, one spirit of faith under you. 
one spirit of faith, for you reward those that diligently seek you. We are diligent, Father, this day, not just seeking, but honoring and glorifying you because we know who you are and we know we are yours. Yes, Father, be a rewarder of us and reward the heathen as they are deserving. Give them a double portion, Father, as they are deserving. Yes, and let our beloved brethren and sisters know worldwide we are one. The prayer I pray for you is whoever is a Yahshualite, whoever is under the sound of my voice, when you line up with the truth and the spirit of faith of the Most High, this powerful prayer is for you, beloved. Let it bind us together. And we are standing in this tower and we're building it higher and higher. But this tower, unlike those in the days of Nimrod, Father, unlike those days, Father, we're building this tower that we may reach the head, which is Yeshua HaMashiach, thy word covering us and you covering him, which covers all with a blessing, Father, that these filthy, corrupt, heathenistic pagans fall due to your glory and your power and your truth. Bless us all around the world, Father, and let each and every one of us know we stand together, be encouraged. Yes, Father, we thank you, glorify you, praise you in the highest, for your word is going out. You said in the last days, knowledge would be increased and we see and we hear. Therefore, we speak. Amen, Father. Glory. Hallelujah. Bless this holy word. For we come to you depending on you and no other. For there is none other but you. All in all. Ancient of days, everlasting to everlasting. Deserving of all praise, Father, in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, giving honor to the Ruach HaKadosh. Amen. Yes, beloved. A word? Yes, yes, yes. May it go out and do exactly what Yah purposed it to do. Shalom.